Hi, my name is Jonathan Katz Moses, and welcome to our new series, No BS Woodworking, where we have no fluff, no sponsorships, and of course, no BS. Now, because this is the first one, I wanted to explain my motive behind this series. Now, a few years ago, YouTube started rewarding creators for longer form content, which made videos really long. And then platforms like TikTok, Instagram Reels, and of course now YouTube Shorts came along and people were rewarded for like high octane, short form eye candy content. And I think what is missing is utilitarian, actionable content that you can take immediately and go use in for our genre, the shop. So I wanted to create that content. As always, these videos are supported only by the people that visit my website. All the opinions and information in here is from me and me alone. I'm not encouraged to say anything or promote anything like that. Now, without further ado, I wanted to get into the first installment in this series, which is routers. Now, we're gonna cover the types of routers, when you would use each type, the types of bits, safety, and some other basic uses of them. And you should be able to take this information for somebody who has never used a router before and go into the shop immediately and start using one. So let's get into it and start talking about the types of routers. Routers are incredibly versatile. That's why they're kind of the do it the other way tool. What that means is they are the tool when something feels unsafe or tough to do, or you don't own the correct tool. The routers can do just about anything if you think hard enough. It's why typically people buy a router as the next tool after a table saw or maybe table saw plane and then router, they come in two different types. There are fixed base, which means you adjust it, turn it on, and it is set at that depth, and that's how you use it. And then plunge base, which means it is adjustable in height as you're working. They come in about three different sizes, which is around one horsepower, which is what we call a palm or a trim router. A mid-size, or sometimes people call them full-size router, which is gonna be two to three horsepower. And then some really beast mode routers, which are three horsepower plus. Now, let's come into the bench. I'm gonna show you the anatomy of each type of router and give you some vocabulary for when we talk about other things in this video. These are the motors of the small guys. They come in a battery or quarter power. I prefer battery. The difference with these is they only come in a quarter inch collet, whereas when you move up to a mid-size or full-size router, they will have both quarter inch and half inch collets. What that means is the size of the shank of the router bit. The shank is the area below the cutting area. This is half inch and quarter inch. This router will accept both. These routers will only accept a quarter inch. The difference with the full size is they usually only come in a plunge base, and that's because you're typically gonna use those for big operations like flattening slabs and lots of other things we can talk about later. There's a speed adjustment dial on all of them, which allows you to change the RPM of the motor. That, those numbers don't mean anything because it is different with every brand. You just need to look in your owner's manual to tell you what those numbers correspond to. We'll talk about feeds and speeds again in another video. Now let's talk about the bases and the difference between those. There are two types of router bases, fixed and plunge. Any size of router is going to have a fixed and plunge base and if you're shopping make sure that it does before you buy because even if you don't get it now you will want it later. Now they're very simple and I'm going to bring you in here and show you how they work. Now first things first you're going to insert your bit. Now like I was talking about in the previous section there is a button that will stop this post from moving. You can see this little hole right here. You're gonna line that up with the button. You can feel it, it is locked in. You're gonna insert the bit that you want and tighten it. You can start by hand and then using a wrench, you can tighten it. You honestly don't need to crank on it so hard that you're straining. As long as it's tight, you're gonna be great. Then you're gonna take it in either your plunge base or your fixed base. There's typically a line in your motor like this that will line up with a couple pins in the base. You line those up with your clamp released, just like that. You wanna insert it all the way and then lock it down. You don't wanna put your motor halfway in. It should go all the way in and seat. That is gonna be the same for fixed base as well. This DeWalt has this ring that comes off, which you need to remove, and you just thread it onto your router. And then same thing, you line the grooves up on your motor and the pins inside the base, and then it locks in just like that. You're going to adjust the height lock it in and use it from there. Now let's talk about a plunge base because it's a little bit more intricate. Now all plunge bases are roughly the same. They have a trigger on them like this that is going to allow the motor to move up and down and then you will push it and that's what locks it in. Same thing with this guy. You can put it down like that and lock. I much prefer the ones that are always tight and you loosen with your finger, it makes use a little bit easier. Now, one of the coolest features about plunge base is this right here. It's this adjustment mechanism. I have a great two minute Tuesday on these. I'll link all the videos and all the tools we talk about in this video down below in the pinned comment and description. All right, what makes this so cool? Well, here's two use cases for this. One, we've established zero, right? And a good rule of thumb for bits is you never wanna take more than the diameter in depth. So this is a half inch bit. 
I don't want to go more than a half inch down per pass. With routers, it's really important to know that the less you take, the easier it's going to be, the less chance of it kicking around. So go take small bites with a router. But let's say we want to take a half inch pass. We know that right here is zero. If I go two clicks, because these are each a quarter inch, one, two, we're now at a half inch. We don't have to measure and check. Let's go back to zero. Here's another great way to use this. So we're at zero, right? We've established that. And now we want to cut down to do some joinery. Let's say we have a tenon. We could take any piece of material, lift this up here, put this between my depth stop and that top stop. And I now know that is going to be exactly the depth of my material. And I'll show you here, flip this over. You can see, look at that. That's the exact height of my material there. Lastly, when would you use each one of these? A plunge base is going to be great for things like mortises, stopped dados. Anytime you're working in the middle of a board and you're not going to exit, it's going to be great. A fixed base is going to be great for anytime you're starting outside the board and exiting outside the board. So that might be a rabbit. Any roundovers, these are great for roundovers and chamfers. I have one that I just keep a chamfer bit or a roundover bit all the time, and I just grab that for doing the edges, profiling of boards. I would say that I use my plunge base most of the time and then fixed base for things where I know the exact depth. I'm going to do that over and over and over. Now, routers come with a lot of accessories. There's a million accessories you can get. The most common one, and a lot of routers will come with a cheap edge guide like this one. It allows you to follow an edge like this and be repeatable. You can buy nice aftermarket ones with micro adjust on them. Also, router bushings. These are the ones we sell on our website. They're great for following templates and can be used for tracing complex objects. This is a router table, again, one we sell, but there are tons of options out there. There's full size and trim router router tables like this one. They're great because they make a lot of things more safe because your router is fixed. You're bringing the material to the router bit rather than the router bit to the material. There's no work holding concerns. They have a fence which allows you to do a lot more things that a router can't do in, by itself. So that's sort of the anatomy of the router and some accessories. Let's talk about safety. Router safety has three aspects. That's PPE, personal protective equipment, work holding, and technique. For personal protective equipment, you're gonna need eyes and ears. Those are essential for any tool. And then because routers have poor dust collection and they're handheld, you're usually not collecting very much of the chips that it's kicking up. So a dust mask or a respirator are all gonna be really important for maintaining good safety with them. Now when it comes to work holding, there's three ways to do it. We have a great blog on our website. Again, I'll link everything down below, but there's three basic things you can do. The first type of work holding is going to be a, something like one of these non-slip pads. Now, I wouldn't cut a deep mortise on this, but I would do roundovers all day on this. This thing's not going to go anywhere, and the act of rounding over or chamfering an edge is going to be great for these. They're also great for finishing on. Uh, the next thing you can do is bench dogs. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They're great for any time you're working on like the face of a board. So, for example, this mortise, if I need to do that, we could lock it in here with the vise. If I wanted to, I could tighten these with a wrench that comes with them, but that's gonna allow me to work on this mortise just like this. It's gonna be super secure. And of course, lastly is the obvious one, which would be clamps or a vise. This is our Moxim vise. Just slide the board into your vise, and then this is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Clamps are tough because when you start clamping things, they tend to get in the way, but of course, sometimes they are necessary and you can just move them and you know, work around them. There's three important things to remember for use. One, first one, most important, small bites. The smaller the bite, the easier it is to use your route. You never want to go more than the diameter of your bit in depth. The second thing is direction. So when you are looking at a picture frame, pretend this is a picture frame, when you're moving on the outside, you are going to be going counterclockwise. And on the inside, you are going to be going clockwise. The reason for that is the bit is scooping that is denoted again on the base of your router. It is telling you which way that is spinning. Now you can use that arrow to tell you which way to go because you want that arrow to be going in the direction that you are pushing on your material. The second way to remember this is the right hand trick. You take your right hand and you point your thumb in the direction of your router bit. The router bit is going to be going in the direction you close your fingers. So it's going to be scooping. So to put, add it to the picture frame model, our thumb is down. When we're going outside, we want to be scooping our material this way. Same thing when we're inside, we want to be scooping our material this way. So clockwise on the inside, counterclockwise on the outside. 
The third thing about use is how to hold your router. Now, when you're using a router, how you hold it, it's gonna be about three different ways to hold it. You're gonna have a fuller size router with handles. That's of course gonna have two handles. Uh, you're gonna wanna put your weight down on the hand an area that is supported by the workpiece and then use your hand that may not be supported by the workpiece just to guide it. But you wanna keep your router from tipping and that is just a smooth, steady hand. You don't wanna be shoving down on it because then if you tip, you know, you're really gonna wanna move. The router will do the work. If you're taking small bites, you can just move it and keep it going. You wanna use steady, kind of light pressure. Then when you're using a palm router, uh, you don't wanna hold it from the top for the same reason. You're gonna get a lot of tipping, so you're gonna hold it from the back. All fixed bases are gonna have an open area so that you can see your bit and what's going on. Uh, and then a closed area, which you can use your hand to guide it. Sometimes, like I think maybe it's only this DeWalt comes with a uh, plastic base that comes out slightly that you can put your finger on to help you guide and keep the router stable, especially when you're doing sort of uh, edge profiling or if you were trying to do something like, uh, you know, a rabbit on the inside of this box. You also may have an auxiliary base like this one that we sell, which will have two handles, same thing. It's gonna be real easy to guide it. Uh, you can hold it with one hand and maybe hold the back of your router, which keeps it a lot more stable. But those are the three ways to be really safe with your router. And if you use those, you're gonna be fine especially the small bites, everything after that, it shouldn't kick, you shouldn't get kicked back if you're taking small bites. Let's talk about the different types of router bits and what they do. All right, so here are the three basic types of bits. This is not to say these are all of the types of router bits. There's tons of specialty bits out there, but this is what you're gonna use 99% of the time until you get into some more obscure specialty parts of furniture making. So we have straight bits, these are spirals. There are actually straight bits. We'll talk about those in a second. We have edge profiling bits. So this is a chamfer bit, which leaves a 45 degree edge, a round over bit, which does exactly what it says, and a rabbiting bit. This is gonna leave you a groove around an edge on the inside or outside of a box and these are pattern bits. They're gonna trace something and cut out the material above or below based on where the bearing is located. First type of bit is straight bit. These are spirals. They actually do come in a straight bit, but I would not recommend using these. They're cheap, they dull quickly, and they create a ton of force. Spiral is a much better bit. There's three basic types. There's an upcut, which is gonna pull sawdust towards you. It's very much like a drill and great for doing through holes, through mortises, things like that. The difference between an upcut and a downcut is the edge in which they leave a better finish. A downcut is gonna leave a better edge closer to your router because it is pushing the fibers down. An upcut is gonna leave a better edge on the bottom of your workpiece because it is pulling the fibers up. You can get a little tear out in the top with an upcut bit, uh, but they work great in hardwoods. These are great for hardwoods. When it comes to plywood, a compression bit is going to be your best bet because it has an upcut portion at the bottom of the bit, usually a quarter to a half inch tall, and the rest is downcut. So when you get all the way through a piece of material, it's gonna pull the bottom edge up and push the top edge down and create a great profile all the way around. These are great for cutting out material with templates and things like that. This is the bit we use most often on the CNC because it leaves the best finish. The next bit is edge profiling bits. So they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. These are chamfer bits. They leave a straight 45 degree edge. These are roundovers, do exactly what they say. Roundover comes in a bunch of sizes from eighth inch all the way up to you know massive bits that are an inch big. This is a rabbiting bit. It's designed for keying a rabbit on the inside or outside of a box or piece. If you were doing the back of a cabinet or the top of a jewelry box, that would be a great choice. These are pattern bits. They use a bearing to trace something like this. This is a template. It's used for creating complex shapes, sort of like this, and they are fantastic. The one caveat to using these is you wanna take as little material as possible because sometimes you're doing a lot of depth. You want to remove down to about an eighth to a 30 second of material. And that's all you wanna take with your router bit. They come in straight and spiral. All three of these are compression. That's the only ones I like to use, but they do come in up and down cut as well as straight bits. These are top bearing bits, which means that the template is going to be on the bottom of your workpiece. Your router will be above. This is a top bearing bit. This means it's going to be, in, the template will be in between your router and the workpiece and we'll trace it here. And then this is a double bearing bit. The bearings are removable and this would be for big thick pieces where you need to route from both sides of it. Or if you have a tough grain situation where you need to go in different directions to avoid having tear out. So those are the three basic type of bits. Like I said, there's lots of other ones. Uh, so let's wrap this thing up. Like I said in the beginning, 
Routers are one of the most versatile tools in your shop. They have so many different accessories. You can get so much done with them. I think it's a great overview, no BS look at actionable intel that'll help you use them safely in your shop. I'm gonna list a ton of in-depth resources we've already created about all of these subjects down in the pinned comment description, well as all the tools we talked about and a lot of blog posts we have that go into a lot of depth on this. Uh, if you'd like to see more of the no BS series, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next. What subject should we cover and just get to the nitty gritty of. Guys, as always, stay safe in the shop. Thanks for watching.